Welcome to this course on enhancing climate adaptation and resilience building through sustainable waste and resource management. The course is based on recent studies in environmental research from leading researchers and experts from local, national and international levels. In this course, we will learn about the various measures that resilient communities and urban systems are taking to anticipate, prepare, respond and recover from climate change impacts. We will particularly focus on helping you to understand how sustainable waste and resource management measures can help in reducing communities and cities' vulnerability to climate change hazards and impacts. Step by step, we will explore the approaches that individual communities and urban systems can take to adjust existing practices, processes or structures to moderate or offset potential climate change related damages and to take advantages of opportunities associated with changes in climate. By the end of this course, you will understand the key aspects of reducing climate change related vulnerabilities through the integration of sustainable management of materials, water, energy and nutrients in climate resilience and adaptation planning. We will present practical examples, case studies and scenarios to help you draw lessons and reflections that will strengthen your understanding. The waste management sector has been estimated to contribute to between 5 to 12% of black carbon and GHG emissions. Most studies that explore climate change and waste management nexus have mostly focused on climate change mitigation benefits via GHG emissions reduction measures in the waste management sector, particularly in resource extraction and life cycle emissions of products. In this course, however, we will focus on the direct and indirect ways that sustainable waste and resource management can help improve adaptation resilience. This includes reducing certain vulnerabilities to resource insecurity, food, water, nutrients and energy, as well as flooding and health hazards from poor solid waste and wastewater management. This course approaches adaptation and resilience building to climate change from an integrated and interdisciplinary viewpoint. So who is this course designed for? This e-learning course is designed for city planners, solid waste management officers, environmental policymakers, and technical officers, as they are often technical climate change and waste management officers involved in adaptation planning at national and city government level. Now, let us look at why it's more important now than ever to realize that sustainable waste and resource management links with climate change adaptation and resilience. Our climate is changing, and so the way we live must also change. Climate change is amplifying the existing challenges of resource scarcity. The availability, access and use of resources are changing. Non-traditional approaches to management resources can help individuals, communities and urban systems adjust to the changing climate. One of the goals of adaptation is to maximize social well-being for a given set of climatic conditions with the objectives to place people or society in a position to respond rapidly and efficiently to the impacts of climate change. The availability, access and use of resources are closely linked to the quality and standard of life. Similarly, the management of waste generated by these resources have implications for the economic, social and environmental well-being of individuals, communities and urban environments. What's more, they extended impacts on their adaptive capacities to climate change. Sustainable waste and resource management strategies ensure that the use of resources do not exceed the ecological limits of the earth and waste resulting from resources are managed or applied in a manner not to harm living and non-living aspects of the Earth. According to the IPCC report 2022, extreme weather events have devastating impacts on the way we live. This includes loss of life, displacement of millions of people from their homes, food, water and energy insecurities and damage to infrastructure. Climate impacts have implications for socio-economic and ecological systems. Resource supplies are strained and without changing resource overconsumption appetites due to economic growth, adapting to climate induced resource insecurities will remain challenging. Strains on ecologically available resources can lead to shortages and much greater price volatility, which have economic implications for livelihoods. In the next two sections of module one, we will explore the relationship between sustainable waste and resource management and climate adaptation and resilience building. The first part of module one will briefly review basic yet essential concepts like climate adaptation and resilience, sustainable waste and resource management. We will discuss how the integration of waste and resource management are relevant to key aspects of resilience building and adaptation planning. The second part of module one will highlight the links between sustainable waste and resource management and strengthening adaptation and building resilience as well as their benefits. We will also explain the potential environmental and economic cost of poor material, energy and nutrient utilization. 
The second module will introduce the various approaches to mapping out relevant actors. Module 2 will also cover the roles they can play in mainstreaming sustainable waste and resource management to support adaptation and as build resilience. In Module 2, we will examine practical examples on how to identify multi-sector mapping and engagement approaches. The third part will cover how to design resilience strengthening measures that can be used when preparing, responding and recovering from disasters. The fourth part of the course will guide you on how to implement disaster risk management measures in the plans and policies of your community. There are worksheet templates available for practicing and deepening your understanding of these subjects. If you are providing training, these worksheets might be useful for organizing workshops. Now, we'll begin the course. In the first part of module one, you will learn about the fundamental concepts of sustainable waste and resource management. In particular, We'll focus on the aspects relevant to adaptation building and resilience. However, we must first refresh our knowledge on some commonly used terms, concepts and frameworks related to adaptation and resilience building. Since this course is interdisciplinary, understanding these terms, concepts and frameworks may help set a common frame of reference and basis for the subsequent modules. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, defines climate change as any change in climate over time which may be caused by natural variability or human activity. These changes are identifiable by the changes in the mean and or the variability of climate properties which persist for an extended period, typically decades or longer. The observed changes alter how physical events occur and impacts how we live. Hazards are potential sources of harm. Therefore, climate hazards are climate-related physical events that may cause loss of life, injury, or other health impacts, as well as damage and loss to property, infrastructure, livelihoods, service provision, ecosystems, and environmental resources. Hazardous atmospheric phenomena include tropical cyclones, thunderstorms, tornadoes, drought, rain, hail, snow, lightning, fog, wind, temperature extremes, air pollution, and climatic change. Vulnerability describes the susceptibility and degree of impact experienced by an individual, community, assets or systems. These phenomena, as explained by climate scientists, depend on a combination of many factors, such as risk, exposure sensitivity, adaptive capacity, character magnitude, and the rate of climate change. High vulnerability usually correlates with a low capacity to respond and recover. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, defines risk as the potential for adverse consequences occurring within human or ecological systems. However, Risk may apply to both the impacts of and the responses to climate change, which may vary based on the context of use. For example, risk described in the context of exposure can refer to the presence of people located in hazard-prone areas, the situation of livelihoods, species or ecosystems, environmental functions, services and resources, infrastructure or economic, social or cultural assets in places and settings that could be adversely affected. Within this context, Sensitivity refers to the degree by which a system is affected, either adversely or beneficially, by climate variability or climate change. To better appreciate these concepts in context, consider the following examples. The risk that flooding poses to human and the ecological systems may arise from the frequency or magnitude of flood hazards and the exposure of the system affected, such topography or the likelihood of local infrastructure being affected by flooding. Risks might also arise due to the vulnerability of the system factoring in design and maintenance of infrastructure and existence of early warning systems. Climate-related risks to flood security may come from multiple drivers, including both the impacts and responses to climate change impacts, including in combination with other stresses. Note that stresses refer to events and trends that are often not climate-related and have an important effect on the system exposed. These can increase the system's vulnerability to climate-related risk. In the context of the impacts of climate change, climate-related risks include pests, weeds, and diseases, as well as the disruptions of pollinator ecosystems that are triggered by the ecosystem's response to weather patterns. Drivers of risks in terms of climate change impacts include climate hazards such as drought, extreme temperatures, flood, and humidity indirect climate-related impacts, including pest and disease outbreaks triggered by an ecosystem's responses to weather patterns, exposure of people, such as the number of people who depend on food cultivation or a particular crop for livelihood, and vulnerability or adaptability, or the ability of the people affected to diversify livelihood sources or substitute other sources of food. However, 
In the context of responses to climate change, drivers of risk may include the demand for land for climate change responses, both in adaptation and mitigation, the role of markets such as price spikes related to biofuel or demand for cash crops in other countries, governance, including how conflicts about access to land and water are resolved, and general human behavior, from trade barriers to dietary preferences. Now that we understand hazards, risks, exposures, vulnerability, and sensitivity, we'll take a look at the definitions of adaptation and resilience. The IPCC defines adaptation as adjustment to actual or expected climate and its effects. Essentially, adaptation refers to human-driven adjustments in ecological, social, and economic systems or policy processes in response to actual or expected climate stimuli and their effects or impacts. Therefore, adaptation would also include any efforts to address these components. Resilience refers to the capacity of social, economic, and environmental systems to cope with a hazardous event, trend, or disturbance. This also includes their ability to respond to reorganize in ways that maintain their essential function, identity, and structure while maintaining the capacity for adaptation, learning, and transformation. From the definitions and explanations presented, we can observe that adaptation and resilience to climate change may be influenced by several factors. In fact, the capacity of a system to adapt to changes caused by a changing climate may require the aggregation of multiple attributes within the system to fully take advantage of the opportunities available, adjust to potential damages, or respond to consequences. Similarly, being able to deal with current and future risks requires building resilience in human and ecological systems to increase their ability to withstand and cope with hazards and shocks and still return to essential functioning. While some natural and social systems have a natural ability to bounce back from adverse circumstances, others must learn how to improve the resilience of people, communities, urban systems, and the environment while reducing vulnerability. This underlying reasoning supports our basis for the use of an integrated, interdisciplinary, and multi-sectoral approach to strengthening adaptation and resilience. What are some examples of risks and potential response options that you can think of in agricultural, food production, such as crop farming, fishing, and animal rearing, urban policy, utility services, energy systems, mining, and natural resource management, and urban public utility services? Use table T1.2 to brainstorm, list some examples of climate-related risks and their potential impacts on the various systems and components identified. Try to identify the potential related vulnerabilities and the potential response options. After refreshing our memories on the basic concepts of climate change, adaptation and resilience, let us move on to look at sustainable waste and resource management. We'll also look at the relevance of enhancing adaptation and resilience to climate change. Generally, the concept of resources extends beyond materials, water, nutrients and energy, and includes finance, time, people, and information. However, in this course, we will refer to resources as consisting of materials, water, nutrients, and energy. We will inform you when that definition needs to be extended. Material resources include biomass sources like crops for food, energy, bio-based materials, wood for energy, and industrial uses. It also includes fossil fuels, metals, and non-metallic materials, such as those used for construction, like sand, gravel, and limestone. Generally, waste is produced as a byproduct of natural resources and consumption. Generally, waste is considered unwanted by the generator. Production and manufacturing processes may generate waste. Waste can be generated in different forms and streams and can be homogeneous or heterogeneous in composition. Waste can be generated from municipalities and institutions, industrial processes, agricultural production, and other sources. Failure to properly manage waste has negative consequences for the environment, human, and ecological health. Poor waste management contributes to climate change and air pollution and directly affects many ecosystems and species. Improper waste management also impacts social economic outcomes and affects the livelihoods of people, communities, and urban systems. The United Nations Environmental Program UNEP, defines waste management as the total supervision of waste generation, handling, processing, storage, and transport from its point of generation to its final acceptable disposal. Waste management is a rather complicated system, which varies in different development contexts. Improperly managed waste in the environment may contribute to pollution of land, water, and the air, climate change, increased disease burdens, loss of habitat and biodiversity, deterioration of infrastructure, radiation and hazardous materials, reduction of quality of living, 
Improperly managed waste affects the natural environment adversely in ways beyond the natural environment's carrying capacity. Increasing global population, the economic growth of nations, rapidly expanding urbanization, and increased demand for resources is increasing waste generation. The pollution loads from waste emissions associated with natural resource use are estimated to have increased in volume and complexity. Against this backdrop, it has become essential for waste management practices to evolve and become more sustainable, so as not to jeopardize the integrity and productivity of the natural environment, and ensure that resources are available for future generations. This brings us to sustainable waste and resource management. For the purposes of this module, it is important to understand the differences between traditional waste management and sustainable waste and resource management. A sustainable approach to waste and resource management is different from a traditional approach to waste management. In a traditional waste management framework, resources are extracted to make products for use and the waste disposed of after the products are used. Traditional waste management approaches focus mainly on managing the waste produced in an environmentally sound manner, whereas sustainable waste and resource management views waste through the lens of sustainability and value retention. This means that from a sustainable waste and resource management perspective, sustainable resource use and the waste generated along the entire product life cycle are integrated in the waste management process. Steps are taken to retain the value embedded in products and wastes via waste reduction, reuse, recycling, repurposing, and diversion to reduce environmental footprints. Essentially, by considering how resources are consumed when producing usable products, the use and post-use phase of the product life cycle, and how the waste generated from products may be reused as, or managed as, resources. These considerations are made from the viewpoint of sustainability with focus on resource efficiency and the reduction of environmental ecological footprint in the use and management of resources and wastes. Transitioning to a sustainable waste management system requires the identification and application of leverage points that affect change. The waste to resource approach promotes a paradigm shift in the management of solid waste. Rather than viewing waste as a problem and burden, this approach sees waste as a valuable resource whose values can be retained to produce sustainable benefits for a range of actors. Here is a common framework used by sustainable waste management experts to design sustainable waste management systems called the Waste Hierarchy Diagram. The Waste Hierarchy Framework guides the design and implementation of sustainable waste and resource management strategies for waste including municipal, solid waste, industrial wastes, agricultural and biomass wastes, hazardous wastes, and more. Some of the central considerations common to both climate change adaptation and waste and resource management are the practices related to the production, management, and use of resources. The resource management components of sustainable waste and resource management focuses on the promotion of efficient use of resources, either from waste recovery and reuse, or from the judicious application of virgin primary natural resources. The steep rise in energy and metal prices is a clear indicator of the fact that the resource and energy supplies are not meeting current demands. But before we end this section, let us briefly consider another three essential sustainable waste and resource management ancillary concepts that are related to this course. Efficient use of resources, circular economy and urban metabolism. Resource efficiency means using limited resources in a sustainable manner that minimizes their impact on the environment. This approach supports the delivery of greater value with less resource input. Improving resource efficiency is among the top priorities in today's world, as governments, businesses, and civil society are increasingly concerned about natural resource use, environmental impacts, material prices, and supply security. Scarcity problems are envisaged for many materials which cannot be supplemented by secondary raw material production in the short term. To get a clearer concept of resource efficiency, take a look at the following self-explanatory diagram on resource efficiency framework, developed by Systemic in consultation with IRP co-chairs. From the diagram, you may observe that the four dimensions of reduction in resource use, better, leaner, longer, and cleaner, provide quite a broad pathway that may utilize multiple strategies to achieve resource efficiency. According to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, a circular economy is a system solution framework that tackles global challenges like climate change, biodiversity, loss, waste, and pollution. 
It involves sharing, leasing, reusing, repairing, refurbishing and recycling existing materials and products as long as possible. This way, the product life cycles are extended. This is a departure from the traditional linear economic model that is based on a take, make, consume, throw away pattern. A linear model relies on large quantities of cheap, easily accessible materials and energy. Meanwhile, a circular economy is based on three principles, elimination of waste and pollution, circulation of products and materials at their highest value, and regeneration of nature. A circular economy aims to decouple economic activity from the consumption of finite resources. It is a resilient system that is good for businesses, people, and the environment. A circular economy contributes to building systems that are adaptive and resilient to impacts of climate change, to resource security. Materials are important intermediaries of environmental impact, and the extraction of such resources is growing steadily as demand rises. Urban metabolism is a model to facilitate the description and analysis of the flows of the materials and energy within cities. This model is useful for urban resource management and helps facilitate decision-making on regional, global, and local levels. With its initial focus on resources and materials, UM has since evolved to account for energy and the endogenous processes occurring within cities, such as accounting for the production of food in cities and the internal reuse and recycling of materials. Again, in line with the global sustainability effort. UM includes inputs, outputs, internal flows, storage, and production of water, energy, material, and food. This model is also useful for analyzing how urban areas function regarding resource use and underlying infrastructure. Ultimately, the UM model helps us understand the relationship between human activities and the natural environment. Expanded forms of the UM may include much more detailed components as by 2016. From the foregoing discussions, it is evident that effective implementation of sustainable waste and resource management can help to effectively contribute to the reduction in resource insecurity via reduction in the demand for and overuse of raw or virgin materials and reduction in over-exploitation extraction of natural resources. The reduction of adverse impacts on human ecological systems via reduction of disease burdens to humans and animals from unmanaged waste and regeneration of natural systems. Improving social, economic and livelihood outcomes of natural resource and agricultural dependent communities and societies. Can you identify the direct and indirect connections between the listed points? Can you imagine how poor waste management systems may exacerbate the impacts of climate change? What are some of the ways that these impacts affect the way we live and adjust to a changing climate? Could you think of any other ways or potential impacts that improper waste management could have on both living and non-living components of the earth? We have come to the end of part one of this course. We believe that you are now familiar with the concepts of climate change, adaptation and resilience, as well as some key concepts related to sustainable waste and resource management. In the next section, we will dive a little deeper into the specific sustainable waste and resource management practices within selected sectors that can enhance adaptation and resilience building. In this section, we will build on our understanding of the concepts introduced earlier in the first part of the module and draw out how sustainable waste management can support adaptation and resilience building to climate change. We will consider, in detail, the direct and indirect connections between sustainable waste and resource connections to adaptation and resilience building response pathways. Reflections from agricultural food systems and urban systems will be used to illustrate how specific sustainable waste and resource management strategies can help reduce climate-related risks and impacts while also enhancing the resilience and adaptation of these systems to climate change. Before we look into specific cases of sustainable waste and resource management, climate change adaptation and resilience, it is important to understand that these connections should by no means be interpreted as a total solution for adaptation or resilience to climate change impacts. More often than not, a truly effective adaptation and resilience enhancement process combines more than one approach or solution. As mentioned earlier, one of the key considerations of adaptation is the adjustments in ecological, social or economic systems or policy processes in response to actual or expected climate stimuli and their effects or impacts. Climate change impacts affect people and ecosystems, physical systems, biological and ecological processes and human health are impacted with direct and indirect implications on environmental productivity, economic productivity and social and healthy well-being. 
The impacts of droughts, rainfall variability, floods, temperature change, rising sea levels and temperatures have introduced uncertainties into agriculture and food systems, water resources, availability, productivity of seas, energy systems and other important systems. One of the key impact areas of climate change is resource scarcity, although other stresses may also contribute. Let us start with the links based on resource security as a vital connecting point for discussions on sustainable waste and the link between resource management and climate change adaptation and resilience. Potential climate related risks and impacts to the system should be mapped along with options for adaptation response and resilience. In agricultural production systems, farmers are faced with decreasing yields due to loss of soil fertility and high production costs arising from increased inputs including fertilizer, water and pest and disease management. Transforming the food system by implementing practices that help to regenerate ecosystems is a decisive step in tackling the most urgent environmental challenges today. The current system operates in a way that pushes the planet's natural environmental limits beyond safe boundaries. Within a framework of sustainable waste and resource management, opportunities exist for farmers in rural areas to adopt sustainable resource management strategies and circular economy principles and to adapt production systems and make them resilient. Climate shocks to food and non-food production systems in rural areas can be absorbed by redesigning food production systems to utilize biological resources effectively and sustainably. Droughts, intense erratic precipitation and rising temperatures and sea levels introduce significant risks to food production systems. For example, the IPCC AR5 say that the direct consequences of climate-induced risks for food security include the loss of rural livelihoods and income, marine and coastal ecosystems and livelihoods, and terrestrial and inland water ecosystems and livelihoods, food insecurity, and the breakdown of food systems. Some of the poor waste and resource management practices that both increase the risk factors and exacerbate the impacts of climate change to food systems may arise from plastic debris on productivity of agricultural soils and productivity of the blue economy, poor management of nutrient-rich irrigation waters and their leakage into groundwater, poor management of nutrients and their leakage into rivers, thereby impacting aquatic ecosystems, leakage of hazardous waste into soil and bodies of water that harm aquatic ecosystems and humans, release of sewage waste and wastewater into the environment and bodies of water, leachate from poorly managed waste and landfills into the environment and water bodies. Farm level risks including changing climate conditions and climate variability and seasonality, availability of water, drought, storms, floods, wildfire events, harvest and post-harvest losses, emerging alien pests, weeds and diseases, disruptions of pollinated ecosystem services, all pose significant threats to food production systems. Potential sustainable waste and resource management practices that can help adapt and enhance farm level productivity include the use of manure and compost from manure and food waste, the use of marginal and wastewater resources, nutrient recovery and reuse, biomass mulch and the use of biochar from agricultural biomass for soil conditioning, sludge and digestate use for nutrient enhancement. The use of plastics in farming is prevalent in many parts of the world. Plastic coated seeds, biosolid fertilizer and much film are commonly used in crop production. All these products have helped increase crop yields, but there is increasing evidence that degraded plastics are contaminating the soil and impacting biodiversity and soil health. This can lead to reduced productivity and could threaten long-term food security. As a finite resource which is under pressure, agricultural soil needs to be safeguarded from further degradation. Sustainable waste and resource management practices at farm levels are helpful to reduce degradation of soils and to improve regeneration and productivity. Circular economy strategies advocate sustainable utilization resources such as biomass and biochar for soil quality enhancement. Sustainable resource management strategies such as efficient use and recycling of nutrients, nutrient-rich bio-waste and wastewater provide alternatives for enriching soil and restoring soil fertility. Compost and manure made from organic waste are rich sources of nutrients for improving soil fertility. Increasing the resilience of food systems may also incorporate reducing post-harvest food losses and limiting food waste along the supply chain. Securing farmer household livelihoods in rural areas via sustainable utilization of waste and resources has the potential to transform and secure structural, economic and livelihood features of farm households and communities which reduces their vulnerability to climate change. 
Restorative and regenerative farming approaches improve the resilience of agricultural production systems. The spillover effects are the sustenance of flow of both food and non-food products and materials to urban areas. Material and energy consumption have become the central drivers of global environmental degradation and climate change. This provides an important linkage point for leveraging the benefits of sustainable waste and resource management in moderating the effects of climate change. Expanding populations and the rising demand for food, energy and materials continue to strain and deplete the available finite resource stocks. Climate change is disrupting weather patterns leading to extreme weather events, exacerbating access to already scarce resources. Materials, water, energy and nutrient flows are being disrupted for both urban and rural inhabitants. In a changing climate, resource insecurity increases the vulnerability of both cities and rural settlements. Increasing urban populations are resulting in expanding areas with increased levels of human consumption, which are also depleting important resource stocks. Sustainable use of resources and the effective and efficient management of waste will minimize resource extraction and waste and thereby reduce humans' ecological footprint. Cities have key competencies to act on climate change by transitioning from wasteful models of raw material utilization and waste management to more sustainable models. Local governments must find ways to strike a balance between these competing interests of economic, infrastructural growth and keeping cities clean from trash or waste while improving sanitation to reduce disease burdens. As climate change may result in increased rainfall intensity, poor waste management can contribute to the impact of urban flooding by blocking drainage, increasing debris and harboring disease vectors. Waste management costs are forecasted to nearly double with implications for local governments' budgets in meeting urban service needs. The World Bank estimates a global revenue gap of $40 billion annually in financing for the municipal solid waste sector. The Asia-Pacific Network for Global Change Research identified improper disposal of solid waste and drainage blockage as some of the common causes of urban flooding in Asian cities. To better understand how sustainable waste management connects to adapting and improving resilience in urban and rural systems, we first need to identify the major climate-related hazards, risks and impacts that rural and urban areas are facing, as well as their need to build resilience and adapt. Climate change impacts are already being felt globally in cities, urban and rural settlements at different scales and intensities. However, due to the differences in their social and economic metabolism, as well as the dynamics of their demography, adaptive capacity and vulnerabilities, the response pathways for urban and rural areas may differ. Urban areas, particularly those with high exposure to hazards, can be areas of vulnerability due to their high population density of people and greater economic activity. Increasing levels of human consumption characterized by unsustainable patterns are also depleting important resource stocks, such as fresh water and fisheries. Meanwhile, waste and pollution are causing negative health and environmental impacts. Increasing resource use and waste production have caused humanity to exceed safe levels of change to the climate, land systems, genetic diversity, and nutrient cycles. The implications for the poor and other marginalized groups are increased vulnerability, deepened poverty, food insecurity, lack of access to energy, hazardous and health-threatening environments, among others. Climate change will exacerbate these existing risks and create new ones. The need for solutions that improve energy efficiency, lower food waste and provide alternatives to scarce resources has never been greater. Cities in developing economies have become hotspots for waste, yet have underinvested in waste management infrastructure. As a result, waste management services in many cities which are an essential urban utility are unable to effectively manage generated waste volumes, often leaking and clogging sewers and drainage systems. These conditions contribute to a city's vulnerability to flooding, sanitation and health-related risks with dire economic implications for poor and marginalized citizens, material, energy and nutrient flows. Due to their metabolism, urban areas and cities can be significant contributors to resource scarcity in a changing climate. With this unique position, cities can draw from the solution and vulnerability to climate change and resource consumption. The impacts of urban areas are far-reaching, stretching well beyond their administrative boundaries. Climate change impacts in rural areas have urban impacts. Teleconnections of resources and migration streams mean that climate extremes in non-urban locations with associated shifts in the supply of materials, energy, nutrients and water, rural agricultural potential and the habitability of rural areas will have downstream impacts in cities. 
As a result, analysis of the interconnections of metabolism and the locations where resources are extracted or produced can provide insight into analyzing the vulnerabilities of rural and urban settings in connection with climate change impacts. Both urban and rural areas are under pressure to reduce their vulnerability to climate hazards. Cities and rural areas need comprehensive city-wide multi-hazard adaptation strategies based on the assessment of their climate risks. Rural populations are characteristically associated with a variety of income sources and occupations within which agriculture and the exploitation of natural resources have privileged, but not necessarily predominant positions. Rural communities' dependence on agriculture and natural resources makes them highly sensitive to climate variability, extreme climate events and climate change. According to the IPCC, climate change impact in rural areas will induce changes in demography, economics and governance trends. Major impacts of climate change are experienced in the social and economic base and livelihoods of rural areas. Some of the most visible climate change impacts to rural livelihoods are seen in an area's water supply, food security and agricultural incomes. Impacts on agriculture, food production systems are not only causing longer term declining yields of major crops, but also causing resource scarcity. We are also witnessing droughts, storms and other extreme events that impact infrastructure, human health and biodiversity. The supply of fisheries, livestock, non-food crops and high value food crops are also affected. Post-harvest aspects of agriculture, such as on-farm and commercial storage, handling and transport, have also been affected by changes in temperature, rainfall, humidity and by extreme events. We can see that resources and systems are central to the discussions of strengthening adaptation to climate change and building resilience for both urban and rural areas. From production, transportation, transformation, consumption and management of end-of-life products, how each of these processes are carried out can have implications for resource stock and the environment. This shows that adaptation and resilience building require collaborative action from multiple stakeholders via a systems approach. The gains of sustainable waste and resource management within both urban and rural contexts offers an opportunity to reconsider the production and consumption of resources from a value chain perspective in a manner that reduces wastes. Sustainable waste and resource management holds the potential to deliver values in reducing the pressure of already climate-stressed production systems and contributes to resource security retention within ecological limits. This brings us to the end of this module. We reviewed essential concepts on climate adaptation and resilience building, sustainable waste and resource management. We reviewed the flows of resources including materials, energy, water and nutrients between urban and rural settings. We have gained knowledge on how unsustainable waste and resource management practices can contribute to resource scarcity and vulnerabilities.